everyone welcome to yellow pages nursing in today's video we will be discussing about oxygen delivery devices before entering into the session if you have not subscribed our channel please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications let's get into the topic an oxygen delivery system is a device used to administer regulate and supplement oxygen to a subject to increase the arterial oxygenation why do we need arterial oxygenation in order to understand this, we need to know the following concepts. First one, hypoxemia. Hypoxemia refers to low oxygen content in the blood. Next is hypoxia. Hypoxia means low oxygen supply in bodily tissues in order to maintain adequate homeostasis. Hypoxia is caused by hypoxemia. So, if there is not enough oxygen in the blood, the blood cannot deliver enough oxygen to the body tissues as it circulates and this leads to hypoxemia. Next comes FiO2. FiO2 is defined as the percentage or concentration of oxygen that a person inhales. FiO2 of normal room air is 0.21 that is 21 percentage. The air that we inhale on a day-to-day -day basis is made up of 21 percentage of oxygen 78% of nitrogen and 1% of trace elements such as argon, carbon dioxide, neon, helium and methane. Oxygen therapy that is delivery of oxygen at a higher concentration than room air at a higher FiO2 is used to treat hypoxia. Next is oxygen delivery devices. Oxygen therapy is the supplementation of oxygen concentration greater than 21%. There is a wide range of oxygen delivery devices broadly divided into the low flow oxygen devices and the high flow oxygen devices. Low flow devices are also called variable performance devices and high flow oxygen devices are also called the fixed performance devices. Now let's look into some of the differences between low flow and high flow oxygen devices. Low flow oxygen devices cannot deliver constant FiO2, whereas high flow devices deliver constant FiO2. Low flow devices does not meet all inspiratory demands of the patient, so some room air is breathed in. Whereas high flow devices are device which meets all the patient's inspiratory flow demands. Oxygen concentration will vary with changes in depth and rate of breathing in low flow devices. Whereas, in high flow devices, it is designed to deliver a specific oxygen concentration to patient. Low flow devices are used in mild hypoxia and contraindicated for patients with abnormal breathing. High flow devices are indicated for patients with abnormal breathing or high minute volume. Let's look into the classification of oxygen delivery devices. Under low flow or variable performance devices comes nasal cannula, nasal catheter, and transtracheal catheter. Under reservoir system that is variable performance devices comes reservoir cannula, simple face mask, partial rebreathing mask and non-rebreathing mask. Under high flow fixed performance devices comes venturi mask, large volume aerosol system, high humidity tracheostomy mask, high humidity teepees, high humidity face mask, high humidity face tent. Under enclosures come oxygen tent and oxygen hood. Let's discuss the low flow that is variable performance devices one by one in detail. First comes nasal cannula. Nasal cannula is a plastic tubing with two protruding prongs for insertion into the nostrils to deliver oxygen. After wearing the prongs inside the nostrils, the nasal cannula is taken behind the ear and then tightened. Using nasal cannula, oxygen flow rate of about 1 to 6 liters per minute can be given with which FiO2 of about 24 to 44 percentage can be achieved. Indications for nasal cannula includes mild hypoxia, for clients who have a stable respiratory pattern, require low oxygen percentage, or during an operative or diagnostic procedure, or for chronic home care. Advantages using nasal cannula includes It is safe and simple to use Easily tolerated by patients It is not expensive Patients can eat and speak by wearing a nasal cannula Disadvantages includes 
Nasal cannula are contraindicated in case of nasal deformity, trauma, congestion, epistaxis, and in presence of nasogastric tube. When oxygen is administered at more than 4 liters per minute, it may lead to dryness of mucous membrane. Nasal cannula cannot deliver oxygen at higher concentration, and nasal cannula are not good for patients who are mouth breathers. Under low flow oxygen devices, next comes nasal catheter. Nasal catheter is a thin single lumen flexible tube which is passed through the nose and ends with its tip in the posterior part of the nasal cavity just above the uvula. In this picture you can observe where the uvula is and where the catheter tip is placed behind the uvula. Nasal catheter usually comes 40 cm long with open distal end and lateral eyes and the size varies between 8 French to 18 French. With help of nasal catheter an oxygen flow rate of about 2 to 3 liters per minute can be given with which FiO2 of about 35 to 40 percentage can be achieved. Indications of nasal catheter include mild hypoxia. Looking into the advantages, nasal catheters are usually well tolerated and they are unlikely to be dislodged. Humidification of oxygen is not necessary because the tip of the catheter lies in the nasal cavity. Disadvantages include Nasal catheter is contraindicated in case of nasal deformity, trauma, congestion, epistaxis and in the presence of nasogastric tube. Nasal catheters gets blocked with mucus and nasal catheter cannot deliver oxygen at higher concentration and there is risk of displacement into the esophagus using a nasal catheter. Under low flow oxygen devices next comes transtracheal oxygen catheter. Transtracheal catheter is a thin catheter inserted surgically with a guide wire between second and third tracheal ring as shown in this picture. Usually, transtracheal oxygen catheter is used for long-term oxygen therapy or for oxygen dependent clients. Using transtracheal oxygen catheter, oxygen flow rate of about 0.25 to 4 liters of oxygen can be administered with which FiO2 of about 22 to 35 percentage can be achieved. Indications for transtracheal oxygen catheter includes hypoxia for long-term oxygen therapy for patients who have nasal or facial irritation oxygen mask cannot be used and hence transtracheal oxygen catheter is used in such cases advantage using a transtracheal oxygen catheter includes it improves oxygen compliance by reducing total oxygen usage of 50 to 70 percentage Disadvantages includes infection gets blocked with mucus and there is chance for catheter to break Next comes reservoir system variable performance device first is simple face mask Simple face mask also called Hudson mask is a low flow oxygen device The mask sits on face and over mouth and nose and has an elastic strap Coming to parts of simple face mask It has a metal strip in order to get adjusted on the nasal bone. It has exhalation ports. It has an elastic strap to get tied at the back and it has an oxygen feeding line. Using a simple face mask, oxygen flow rate of about 5 to 8 liters per minute is administered with which FiO2 of about 40 to 60 percentage can be achieved. Indications for using simple face mask includes mild to moderate hypoxia. It is best used for short term emergencies operative procedures or for those clients where a nasal cannula is not possible Advantages include it is simple and safe to use it is easily tolerated by patients and it's used in case of clients who are mouth breathers and it is easy to apply Disadvantages include simple face mask requires tight seal otherwise the required FiO2 cannot be achieved It is uncomfortable because it makes patient more difficult to eat, drink or speak while in place. It is difficult to keep in position for a long time and the elastic strap may cause irritation. Patient inhales room air through the side holes in the mask and oxygen face mask cannot deliver oxygen at higher concentration. The next variable performance device is non-rebreathing mask. Non rebreather mask is also called NRBM. It is also a simple face mask with an oxygen reservoir and a valve. 
coming to the parts of non rebreather mask it has an expiration wall an inspiration wall an oxygen feeding line and an oxygen reservoir bag nrbm is a low flow oxygen device with high fio2 the mask sits on face and over mouth and nose and has an elastic strap this uses a reservoir bag to deliver a high concentration of oxygen as mentioned already there are two one way valves that is inspiration valve and expiration valve let's discuss them one by one Inspiration valve is between the face mask and the plastic reservoir bag that is attached to a supply of oxygen. The valve does not allow the exhaled air or outside air from entering the bag, so only oxygen flows from the bag to the mask. The expiration valve allows exhaled air to flow into the atmosphere but doesn't allow the outside air to enter. The main function of this mask is during exhalation the inspiration valve closes and the expiration valve opens and hence co2 is not available during inhalation using a non rebreather mask oxygen flow rate of about 10 to 15 liters per minute can be administered with which fio2 of about 95 to 100 percentage can be achieved minimum of at least 10 liters per minute oxygen should be administered through non rebreather mask in order to prevent rebreathing Indications for non rebreather mask includes severely hypoxic patients who are ventilating well. It is best utilized in acute cardiopulmonary emergencies where a high FiO2 is necessary such as cardiac arrest, shock, sepsis, pulmonary embolus, etc. About the advantages, it provides high FiO2. The reservoir bag provides extra oxygen when the client breathes faster or deeper. It does not dry the mucous membrane in short term and the two one way valves which we have already discussed allows only to breathe pure oxygen and hence carbon dioxide retention is prevented Disadvantages includes it requires tight seal and it is uncomfortable for patients and it can be used only for short term malfunctions can cause CO2 to build up then thereby suffocation aspiration is caused in case of vomiting Next variable performance device is partial rebreathing mask. Partial rebreather mask is also similar to non rebreather mask. The only difference is it doesn't have the one way valves. The parts of partial rebreather mask includes exhalation ports, oxygen feeding line and the reservoir bag. The main function of partial rebreather mask is CO2 is exhaled into reservoir bag and side ports close during exhalation. and then the co2 is inhaled using a partial rebreather mask oxygen flow rate of about 6 to 10 liters per minute can be administered with which fio2 of about 60 to 80 percentage can be achieved partial rebreather mask requires a minimum oxygen level of at least 6 liters per minute or more the indications for partial rebreather mask includes short term emergencies Advantages using a partial rebreather mask includes the inspired gas does not mix with the room air. Patient can breathe room air through exhalation ports if oxygen supply gets interrupted. Disadvantages include it requires tight seal and uncomfortable for the patient. There is insufficient flow rate which may lead to rebreathing of carbon dioxide and this leads to suffocation hazard. More oxygen flow does not increase FiO2. In simple terms partial rebreather mask can be defined as simple masks with additional reservoir that allows the accumulation of the oxygen enriched gas for rebreathing and remember the reservoir bag must remain inflated and the flow rate must be sufficient to keep the bag 1/3 to half inflated at all times so this is all about the low flow oxygen devices in our next video we will be discussing about high flow oxygen devices If you find this video useful please like it share it and subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications Thanks for watching and have a nice day